The upregulation of NMDA receptors through the influx of calcium ions as a secondary messenger to increase synaptic plasticity in Drosophila melanogaster neuromuscular junctions by Kyle Peter. In the United Kingdom alone, the economic cost of dementia per year is around 23 billion euro, the highest of all diseases including cancer, heart disease, and stroke, exceeding that of cancer by around 11 billion euro. Despite this knowledge, the annual government and charity investment in dementia research is about 3.8% of that of cancer research, displaying a need for further research and investigation in dementia. In the United States, between now and 2050, the number of people aged 65 and older with Alzheimer's disease, the most prevalent form of dementia, may nearly triple, from 5 million to a projected 13.8 million barring the development of medical breakthroughs to prevent, slow, or stop the disease. Synaptic plasticity is a term used by neuroscientists who are interested in focusing on the way the brain changes. And this word plasticity has a lot to do with the word plastic. And anyone who has used plastic or felt a piece of plastic knows that plastic is different from objects like hard metals or rock in that it's pliable. Plastics bend and change and you can you know, melt them a little bit and change their shapes. You can mold them into what you would like them to look like. And the idea is that synapses, which are the sites of connections between nerve cells and other nerve cells, have a plastic property. That is, they're changeable. They mutate, not in a genetic sense, but they just change either their shape or their function over periods of time that could last for a few seconds, a few minutes, a few hours, or perhaps even for a lifetime. There are many people who believe that when you learn something, when you experience something and you never forget that, that thing you never forget, the way it is built in your brain is by changes in the structure and function of the synaptic connections. The N-methyl-D aspartate, or NMDA receptor, a glutamate receptor, is the predominant molecular device for controlling synaptic plasticity and memory function. The activation of the NMDA receptor is dependent on voltage, a result of ion channel block by extracellular magnesium and zinc ions. This facilitates the flow of sodium ions and small amounts of calcium ions into the cell and potassium ions out of the cell to be voltage dependent. This imbalance between the flow of ions causes an electrical impulse, leading to an action potential within the synapse, or the firing of the neuron. Within the NMDA receptor, calcium flux is thought to be critical in synaptic plasticity. During development, NMDA receptor-mediated excitatory neurotransmission is essential for activity-dependent modification of synaptic connections and for refinement of functional circuits, as shown when glutamate enters the NMDA receptor, it increases the calcium ion concentration in the postsynaptic neuron. This triggers the excitation of the CAMP, or cyclic adenosine monophosphate kinase pathway, leading to the phosphorylation of CREB, which is the CAMP response element binding protein. This transcription factor is a component of intracellular signaling events that regulate a wide range of biological functions including circadian rhythms and memory. The Drosophila neuromuscular junction, or NMJ, is a good model for studying fundamental questions about synapses. Similarities between mammalian central nervous systems and Drosophila NMJs include the basic feature of synaptic transmission, as well as the molecular mechanisms regulating the synaptic vesicle cycle, such as glutamate, the dominant excitatory neurotransmitter in the human brain. Because of its large size, easy accessibility, and well-characterized genetics, the FLY NMJ remains a fitting model system for dissecting the cellular and molecular mechanisms of synaptic transmission. Shown is a Drosophila larval muscle, in orange, innervated by motor neurons in green, branching into numerous boutons. Per bouton, 10 to 20 synapses consisting of postsynaptic glutamate receptor fields and an associated presynaptic active zone are found. Subabrata Sanyal used Drosophila melanogaster model synapses to analyze cellular functions and regulation of the best known immediate early transcription factor, AP1, 
a heterodimer of the basic leucine zipper proteins FOS and JUN2. Results showed that neuronal AP1 positively regulates both glutal number and synaptic strength. Increased neuronal expression of AP1 results in a 30% potentiation in evoked junctional currents, or EJCs, indicated by the white bars, and a parallel increase in the number of synaptic boutons, indicated by the black bars. Observations from genetic epistasis and RNA quantification experiments indicated that AP1 acted upstream of CREB, regulating long-term plasticity, or LTP. As shown in figure A, ADF1 influences bouton number but not synaptic strength. An important CAMP-sensitive target functions downstream of AP1 in regulation of synaptic strength. S upstream signals derive from neural activity-induced calcium ion and CAMP signaling. Figure B displays the quantitative comparison of mRNA levels by qPCR. After the induction of AP1, CREB2 mRNA levels increased threefold, FOS mRNA levels increased fivefold, and JUN mRNA levels increased fourfold relative to the uninduced control. Along with CREB, nitric oxide has the ability to directly affect synaptic plasticity. As a diffusible free radical gas, nitric oxide is a multifunctional messenger affecting many diverse aspects of mammalian physiology. Britt Wildeman searched for a nitric oxide CGMP signaling system at the neuromuscular junction of Drosophila melanogaster larvae. Using the sterile dye FM143 with quantitative fluorescence microscopy and an optical assay to follow synaptic vesicle recycling and release, it was shown that nitric oxide donors and membrane permeant CGMP analogs induce vesicle release. Average fluorescence values for various drug stimulation protocols are shown. Compared to the Ringer solution control, there was a highly significant decrease in fluorescence in the groups stimulated with SNP, SNAP, A-bromo CGMP, dibuteryl CGMP, and SNP in cobalt chloride saline. The combined immunocytochemical and exocytosis imaging experiments imply the involvement of CGMP and nitric oxide in the regulation of vesicle release at the NMJ of Drosophila larvae. The purpose of this experiment is to increase the synaptic plasticity in the neuromuscular junctions of Drosophila melanogaster. It is hypothesized that IBMX and carbochol will cause an increase in the release of neurotransmitters in the synapses, exciting the receptors, causing an increase in CREB, which is directly correlated to learning and memory. Quantitatively speaking, this would cause an increase in CTCF, or corrected total cell fluorescence, of the neuromuscular junctions of Drosophila melanogaster. The three strains of Drosophila that will be used in this study are Oregon RC, which is a wild type strain, PGAWB ELAV C155, which is a GAL4 reporter allowing for the visualization of gene expressions between neurons, and DCREB S162 FM6, which exacerbates Huntington's disease. Female versions of all these strains will be collected and isolated. IBMX and Carbitrol are excitatory neurotransmitters that have the ability to increase synaptic firing. The treatment groups will include a control with no chemicals and chemical groups consisting of IBMX or 3-isobutyl 1-methylxanthine and Carbitrol or carbamoylcholine chloride, both at 50, 100, and 200 micromolar concentrations. They will be administered to the medium prior to the introduction of Drosophila larvae. The neuromuscular junction will be prepared through a dissection assay at the third instar larval stage of development. The FM143 dye uptake will allow for the GFP visualization of the neuromuscular junctions in vivo. GFP luminosity will be measured with the Zeiss Axiovert 40 CFO fluorescent microscope and pictures will be taken with the Canon EOS rebel camera. The autofluorescence of the neuromuscular junctions will be analyzed and compared using image J with the unit of data being the CTCF or corrected total cell fluorescence. Descriptive data analysis will be done using means plus or minus standard deviations, and statistical analysis will, will be done with the IBM software SPSS using one-way ANOVA tests and CHEFE postdoc tests, all with significant values less than 0.05 to compare the gathered results. The following is the projected budget. The following is a bibliography. Thank you for your attention.